And you work at a car shop, don't you? Yes. All right. Do you recall Ashley Sheldon reaching out to you? Ashley, would you please stand up? Uh, she didn't reach out to me. She just came up to my place of work. She came up to your place of work. And she said she was a Milwaukee police department. She, she said, said she, she was the police. She said she was with the police. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sidebar. Oh, shit. You idiot. Did you... <laughs> <laughs> Did your assistant go and represent that she was a member of the police? Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh god, uh, this is not <laughs> the day the day could go better for the defense. <laughs>
my impression was that they were just trying to reach him and I didn't think anything of it. The reason I went along with my questioning was defense counsel's question of, well, you met with the, you met with the state, you didn't meet with the defense led me to believe that this wasn't someone with their firm. Because when I talked to defense counsel, when I talked to Mr. Ahmad, honestly, at the end, we thought maybe there was some private firm maybe trying to get some civil lawsuit that might be doing some investigation. He told me it had nothing to do with him. We knew it wasn't the Milwaukee Police Department. And then when defense counsel says, well, you never met with us, that would obviously include someone sitting at their table that they didn't meet with. <laughs> So I was left in the impression it was someone completely different. I wasn't expecting them to then not pull out their out. own paralegal. And then that was unfortunately the answer that we got. So that is the factual basis of how I came aware of it. And I let defense counsel know that whoever talked to him left him with the distinct impression based on how they introduced themselves that he was speaking to a Milwaukee police detective. None of that alleviates my concern. <laughs> I love this judge. No one that's not an attorney speaks in this court. <clears throat> Mr. Maude, that does not relieve any of my concern. Everything the state just said heightens yeah. my concern. Yes. This was discussed. Now this comes in as a surprise. Your paralegal was just potentially made a witness in this case. And as you know, I'm not saying this occurred, but if it did occur, impersonating a police officer is a felony. Okay? This is not a good situation. And I want an explanation right now from the defense. Judge, as I explained in chambers, so attorney Huebner had contacted me a couple weeks ago. We were discussing some witnesses and then he brought this up regarding Mr. She Parr. better be nervous as At shit because moment, her Ms. firm Sheldon will probably defend her and that means office, she's guilty. <laughs> and I had her come in and we, we spoke together, um, all three of us. She was, it was on speakerphone with attorney Huebner and I told her no. She did reach out to Mr. Parr. I believe she had a brief conversation with him at work. Um, she gave our own business card. We wanted to meet with them to come into our office. I don't think there was any follow-up, but Ms. Sheldon works with me and attorney Nolan, attorney Lynn, who all practice here in Milwaukee. We always identify ourselves as a modern oh, yeah. Then the problem is you asked them specifically misleading question to the witness because you and your co-counsel know based on just said that your investigator spoke with that witness. And yet Mr. Lamar led the witness into saying, well, you didn't speak to our firm, did you? Mm -mm. Yes, that's exactly what was said. They're not getting out of this one. Mm -mm. Because Mr. Lamar was trying to imply bias in that witness because he spoke to the state and not your firm. Yep. Exactly what Mr. Lamar asked was, well, you didn't come speak to us. Counsel, that's a problem. We plan on making Ms. Sheldon a witness. We wanted to move but on. The state may want her to call her as a witness. No. Yeah. Attorney Huebner. Huebner just wants us to go away. Involved, yeah. Lamar's firm and then our firm. But Mr. Mott, if you know, you're a Oh, team. stop that. He stop believes that shit right okay, now. That's like the head coach telling me he didn't know that the assistant coach was calling a timeout or vice versa. Doesn't work yep. that way. I'm taking a break. I like this. Read this this, this guy, that's almost certainly he's what badass. happened. Yeah, that's almost certainly what happened. I mean, the defense just fucked yeah. up. Uh, yeah. but, but it's not excusable or acceptable. That's what the judge is really saying here. He's making it clear. And and by the way, uh, so that, that firm distinction that the lawyer tried to pull right there, when two law firms are working together on a particular case, they're sharing a file, they're sharing information, they're pretty much regarded as a firm under the rules of professional conduct. Yes. Uh, if, even if you have two lawyers who are not associated working in the same building, they're considered the same firm unless they're specifically like separated out on issues. So him trying, that's why I was like, don't try that shit. Uh, you, you don't get to weasel your way out by saying, Oh, well, it's we're, we're actually two different firms. No, you're on the same file. You're hired for the same defense. You're one firm for the purposes of professional conduct. And that was a very, very bad look by the defense. <laughs> it looks incompetent. Very. Yeah. Probably because they were incompetent. Yeah, sorry, we had absolutely no idea what people in our office were doing. And that's why we asked these questions. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, I asked I asked the question and the judge is 100 percent right. You're trying to elicit bias. And yet you knew that you had reached out to him. So you asked a misleading question that goes to candor before the court. There there are multiple 
uh, professional responsibility violations that potentially occurred in the past 10 minutes from that one firm. And here's just a pro tip for everybody. Maybe don't request the judge be recused as a racist right before the trial <laughs> and then expect to get anything less than the treatment they're getting uh, in trial. It's, it's not, it's not going to be the best look. So uh, this, this judge has seems to have no, uh, no time for bullshittery, which is good. He shouldn't. He shouldn't. The, the 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 one of the reasons I wanted to watch this case is because it has all of the potential to become a circus based on the defense being a, a B. Ivory, Mr. B. Ivory Lamar appears to be an activist mm -hmm. and an activist attorney with a judge in a race related case has it could just explode into nonsense and mayhem at any moment. And uh, and this judge and this doesn't the, want it. And, and this is the, but this is the perfect judge for, for that. Because, yeah, sure. because he's a guy who's not going to take BS. He doesn't take crap. He does. He sees through the games. He calls you on your BS. And that's a, a Judge Schroeder would basically be played around by this sort of thing. This guy is he's he does not screw around. He's not if he spits fire. I expect mm -hmm. that it's not going to be the empty threat Schroeder's gives of like, you know, I'm really pissed at you. I'm really angry. No, I mm -hmm. expect that this guy. I think that he would he would cite ethics violations and that he would potentially outside of the ambit of the jury, you know, potentially sanction them if they. Yeah, he could have sanctioned them right there. He could have done it right there. And he might still. Yeah. Yeah, he, he very well could. I mean, he, he's clearly not satisfied with what happened. You know, that's hard to overestimate how bad this is for the defense. I mean, we were talking earlier about how in self-defense cases, the defendant's credibility is everything, right? If you come yeah. across as a liar, your self-defense case is basically in the shitter because if they can't believe what you're saying, why would they ever believe it was self-defense? Well, this judge doesn't believe this defense anymore, right? He no. thinks they're either incompetent or just making bullshit up. Um, and that's that's not good for the defense. Yeah, it's not good for the defense at all. And, uh, you know, the 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 only saving grace for them is that the judge didn't berate them in front of the jury. Uh, but he probably <laughs> he probably didn't do that because otherwise they could theoretically say that you buy yeah. our client that way. And, and yeah. that could cause for like an appeal issue. So uh, Jennifer Genter, what does a sanction look like? Sh sanctions can take all sorts of shapes and sizes, but it could be, it could be something from a monetary fine, some sort of monetary fine. It could be mandatory CLE. Uh, it could go all the way up to suspension or disbarment. I don't think you're going to get disbarment in this case, uh, no. or anything like anything even close. Um, there would have to be a, a lot to something like that, but I'm just trying to give you the range. It could be something from a nominal fee to a serious fee to um, a fee based on like, what is the state's cost uh, for dealing with this? Like how much did that cost the state? So maybe it's $2,000 or something. And it could be, you know, mandatory CLE training. I mean, and, and by the way, if you want to put a, an attorney through hell, mandate some CLE training that they <laughs> oh, have yeah, to kidding. attend on a particular date on a particular subject where they have to rearrange their calendar in person. And, and, and go do it in, in person. person. Oh right. God, they, yeah. they hate, <coughs> you hate doing that shit. And of course, so. one of the reasons for the sanctions is not just to hold these lawyers accountable, but to send the message to all the other lawyers, right? Yes. This kind of nonsense is not going to be acceptable. And this is the pain you will feel if you engage in this kind of conduct, whether deliberately or through incompetence. Anything else from either side on the issue we were discussing before the no, break? No, no you are. No, right, nobody wants now, to talk about it. I'll, I'll I don't blame them. It. We'll move on. Hopefully, there won't be any other issues. To have the state's next witness. For uh, the sanctions. sake of your souls. <laughs> we brought in. We'll bring the jury in, please. Just so people know, that's a lot of times how judges handle issues like this. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get one. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get a gimme or a mulligan on one one type of thing. Uh, you know, the judge isn't going to immediately sanction people unless it has to be really, really bad, like really, really bad to get an immediate sanction. But most of the judges want to just get through the trial and get it done. They don't want to belabor these things. So he said he's dropping it, moving on. Hopefully nothing like this happens again. Now it comes the problem with another witness and they start seeing a pattern. Then we could see some issues, but <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> this is not on record. We'll talk about this. All right, the jury. I'm bringing the jury in. Everybody's to remain seated and silent. <laughs> Fuck, I, I actually, I like this judge. He is, 
no BS. And he's he moves his court along. It's it's such the it's the opposite of you know, Schrader's sitting there playing Jeopardy or whatever with the with the jurors and and he gets he gets kind of heated. I haven't seen this judge blow up at anyone, but he did. I mean, he excoriated the defense yesterday. And I felt like it's like when your dad dresses you down but doesn't raise his voice. It's just like you have five seconds to tell me why you're such a screw up with your stupid life, you moron. <laughs> I knew your mother cheated on me. <laughs> As to the peacefulness of Mr. Clearman, uh, the relevance of the Facebook post show otherwise. And if uh, <coughs> these Facebook posts don't show anything, first of all, counsel, start by identifying them. Oh, Connor, it is the screenshot of Miss. He's pissed. Uh, Look at his hand shaking. Hey, who got yeah. these screenshots? It's publicly available online. Who got them? Who got the screenshots? We got, we got the screenshots. Who? Who? Authenticated. Uh, stop saying we. Who? The, the defense counsel, um, the paralegal Ashley just printed them out. Just a Ashley who? Then again, Ashley is a witness in this case. Yep. Step out for the rest of this trial. Sidebar. Oh. What, what are you doing? You, you're going to just have your, your paralegal grab some screenshots of a thing. You're going to have to have her authenticate it. What was the date that the screenshot came out? Have they been altered? The the prosecutor gets to cross-examine her. Uh, you're going to have to lay foundation. Why does she know these screenshots to be fair and well, accurate? Fair enough, yeah. I mean, oh, she found them on the that... internet. Ooh, yeah. Like, you know, come yeah, on. Is I think this it's the, same the same paralegal who was the purported cop? That's who was out of the courtroom. Yeah. I mean, she, she could well have been a witness on that basis alone. Now she's another witness. She's going out and collecting evidence. Ha <laughs> ha, I just got your paralegal thrown out of the courtroom. Ha <laughs> ha, get wrecked. I mean, what what are they doing? It's like, have they? Is this their first trial? Is that possible? I think Lamar thought this trial was going to be like a career maker, and it's turning into a career ender for him. This is this is disastrous. I mean, does it? You know, there's. I mean, there's procedures <laughs> for, for this kind of thing that are that are pretty well established. <laughs> what are yeah, these? Well, you, would, you would hire an investigator. Uh, you would hire an investigator to go ahead or, or have, have like an IT guy or something who can explain the, the capture process, who, who are comfortable having as a witness. Who and can you're just, not doing this mid trial. Why, why? Yeah. Why are you, why are you capturing evidence in the middle of the trial? Five seconds before right. there's testify. You, How's this not something that happened months ago? You'd have it all ready turned just over. in case the door was opened. You'd have it all ready and you'd be, be yeah. prepared. To you have a nice little file questions. in case of, you know, blank, break glass. But it's like, oh, I'm going to go send out the paralegal to go print the things from the internet that I, we're now doing discovery in the middle of the trial that I just now downloaded from God knows where. We got Did it from she? Nick Ricada. That means it's reliable. But I do yeah. like this. I, I, I this, I, the way he sounds pissed, or the way he sounds like he can't be bothered with everything. But I do like the way he's very direct and he makes decisions and he's very sort of like, yeah, oh, he's, he's always he's always in don't be brazen with me mode. His hand was shaking. I mean, yeah. he was shaking, grabbing that paper. He is on edge with this defense. They have, they have angered this judge tremendously. What is rule number one of litigation? Don't piss off the Don't judge. Piss off Don't the judge, piss off the judge. And I believe it's Ashley that's your paralegal. She is now potentially again a witness in this trial. She is out and not allowed back in the courtroom. Nice. You have twice Correct. made her a potential witness. Yesterday, there was testimony that she may have held herself out as a police officer. Today, there's testimony, potentially, that she, just within the last hour, with no notice to the state, printed out what are allegedly, what purport to be Facebook posts. In both cases, she might be a witness. That's never intended on calling her. She just does some internal research. She's never taken you, any statements. Then you can't I've have her written a report, gather never evidence. Never as a witness, she just assists us in collecting certain things like news articles, videos, things like that. Just be judge. Right. Counsel, for situations like that, you should use an investigator, not yep. an employee of your office. Yep. Mr. Hubner, can you address this, please? He's like, oh, man. Your Honor, I would just <laughs> simply state that we just mic. want to try the case, Your Honor. <laughs> we just want to introduce evidence that no um, one's ever seen from a source the, that we don't know. I, regarding, the, regardless of that issue, my point is I don't understand the relevance of 
two Facebook photos, two Facebook, I, I guess, a slideshow of stating that other people may not like Jason, but the wife likes Jason. Like, I don't understand what the relevance of this is. I don't understand the relevance either. Judge, it was so the relevance. I also don't understand how they're going to be authenticated. I don't know when they were taken off of Facebook, which again, counsel is why your paralegal is now a potential witness. What's the question? What's the relevance? So, Judge, Attorney Hubner elicited on direct that from the witness, the room she still? testified. No, he the asked the question, then she, she answered, I think, a little differently. And she said that Mr. Clearman is a peaceful guy. He is into conflict resolution, something along those lines. And that, you know, the, the state's trying to introduce that he's a peaceful character. The statement, or not the statement, but the Facebook post just has one tagline which says, we won't get along. And that shows the name Jason Clearman. We probably won't get along is the exact language of that. And there's a- Which goes to show he's gorilla. violent? Now- you you as did far that as authentication. I think you we did could that. Simply That's just what you're getting your paralegal thrown out over. Need to show to see how a Facebook profile of him saying we might not get along has anything to do with character for, for peacefulness. Of course, there it are doesn't. Plenty of people Nothing. that I don't get along with that have never punched me or shot me in the face. <laughs> no, what I probably <laughs> won't get along. It's <laughs> right. The one Facebook. Post. It looks like it might be. We probably won't get along. It has nothing to do with the character for unpeacefulness. What are you talking about? I don't know how to describe it because, as far as I'm concerned, Facebook is part of the downfall of society. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my God. I love him. <laughs> and I'm not on Facebook, thankfully. But it looks like it might be a possibly a screenshot. One that says, Jason Clearman, we probably won't get along. Then there's one that says, Evangelina Clearman, I, however, do get along with him. That's relevant how? In terms of peacefulness, if you're somebody who just doesn't get along with others. Oh, my God, what a reach. The proposition that the Mr. Clearman is... Putting on his own page, then this is it. This is what they have. To, yep. You know his peacefulness, or I think that's a jury question to decide, Judge, <laughs> if he's a peaceful character or unpeaceful character. We've seen the video, so we're aware. So this is a binger argument. Facts in this case. Hey, you no, know, no threshold required. Just put it in front of the jury, whatever it is. Let them decide. Um, I think that this is since it's been introduced. Cool. I think it's fair game, Judge. If it wasn't, then I think the state. But this isn't probative sense, evidence. History. You can't even look at the it's judge. He's arguing it. He's looking away from one the judge. Facebook post shows nothing. It's, car it's, it's, it's character. The paralegal is still out. <laughs> Two times, she's out for the rest of the trial. <laughs> you we're idiot! We're not discussing this anymore, counsel. We're not discussing it anymore. A may my ruling. It's out. It's irrelevant. I'm sustaining the state's objection. Let's bring the let's bring the witness back in, please. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you lost your paralegal over that. That was the weakest post you could have picked, too. What an idiot. So character evidence is allowed in when the character has been introduced, and it was introduced by the witness. So to, to, to rebut, rebut that, yeah. yeah, to rebut that, it would be allowed. But that's not really displaying anything about his character as far as being a propensity for has violence. To be yeah, it can't just be like his characters, whether he was stingy or something right. like that. And it's got to be something related to this case. And a guy who just has on on a Facebook post saying we probably won't get along doesn't mean he's a guy who's constantly in fist fights. No, yeah, I mean, it, could, a bunch it of... could mean the person who made the post doesn't get along with people. Right. It could mean almost anything. I think it was on his bio, no, like his, his profile bio. bio. Right. right. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh. Which which is description, right. please. Right. Here we go. And Mike Brogan says, best part is had they not begged for that two minutes, this never would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> so far I do not beg about more of the fright. The spirits flow as the one suit get unemployed. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear lost painting tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Limit, there's no one who explains the thought better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed.
make the love of we have to make. 